I'm uh, heading towards Castleton, but uh, I'm really going to Malton. I just don't go up the Sugarloaf at all because I've got cattle in. I've got three quite big bullocks. I, I didn't think they were that big until I got them in the trailer, and it's about full. I mean, it's not overloaded, but uh, there's three bullocks are about uh, two, two or fourteen months, and one is more like maybe seventeen months. Quite a big difference between them, to be fair. But, well, in age, but they're all quite a similar size. The oldest one is the best one. We've been doing a hedges long here. This will be Holston's yesterday, or recently. It's never really a, a nice thing because you've got to drive through all this crap up. Because uh, the worst thing you can have when you've got the trailer on is a puncture. I just, uh, yesterday I put the trailer on and, and checked the tyre pressures and it was a bit surprising how uh, the trailer, they actually recommend to run it at 70, I usually put 65 in. I don't really know why, but anyway. But they were all on 55, so I don't think I'd put 55 in, so they'd all, they'd all lost about 5 psi since it was last. But they were all very even, and that's a good thing. But none of them were sort of lower than the other, so it's just a kind of general weepage and seepage out of around the rims or whatever. Looks like they are tubeless. Because uh, most tyres aren't really 100% airtight, because the air can get out through the through the rubber itself, even if it's in good condition. Molecules get through, and it, over time it will go down. Well. It, it was a very cold night, but it wasn't really freezing. It was hovering mostly between zero and one all night, when it will have been icy on the road, freezing on the road surface. However, they've given things quite a good salting. So I don't think we'll have the slightest problem with ice, but I still didn't dare go up the uh, steep hill straight, straight up. Coming this way adds about 10 minutes to the, to the time, because by now, had to be at the top of Sugarloaf, but uh, I've still got to trail away up Castleton Rig, which is a, a long, he's waiting. I don't think they've salted that road, so I probably won't go down it either. It's not so bad going back down this way anyway, because you can, first when you're empty, you can go faster, but secondly, it's downhill, so you could be in fifth gear. It's coming up with every load, and it seems to take forever. But I always think like, you're doing reasonably well if you get totally old by half past ten. You won't be far off, it's about quarter past now. Because where, th where things can go horribly wrong is at home when you're loading them. Uh, they did go quite smoothly really, I was impressed because I thought, well one of them, the oldest one, is a bit sort of, I wouldn't say flighty, he just seems a bit sort of timid. -y. When I was bringing him down the yard he was like, oh my god there's a bit of plastic or something like that, you know. He did, everything he got came up to he had to stop and smell it because it was possibly a trap. But in the end they went in the uh, loading shed quite easy because one of them is bold as brass, cocky type. And uh, then I, I was expecting the, the timid one would be very cautious about going in the trailer but I put loads of uh, bedding on the ramp so they couldn't even see it. And they just went straight in, first go, which was uh, nice. 
Now I want a little trick, well, it's not like something new, but because this trailer has like flaps at the front you can open, so it looks to a, a stupid bullock like you can go straight through. Well, at least you aren't going into like a dark hole. It looks light and, and furthermore, where I load them, they can see the cows across the yard and they knew they were there because I had the gate open before I a gate with a bar behind. So they could see the cows across the yard and they thought, oh, we're going towards the cows. And when they get in the trailer, they can see the cows through the, uh, the flaps at the front and it really works quite well. I very, very rarely have a major problem, but just every now and then you get one that has a bit of a paddy about it. The step on it, and it, well, it does feel weird to a bullock. You can't expect them to, to just walk straight onto like a metal door. having a bit of a move around at the moment. Ah, salty, salty spray. Hopefully the roads will be dry lower down. It is nice to get on these dry roads though down here. That veil on the left looks good this time. I don't, I'm not quite sure what happened in there last year. If it was a crop it was a complete disaster. It was totally very wet last autumn, it just never got away. I think slugs and crows and everything else was eating it. But it is, it is just possible it was never actually sowed, I really don't know. And it was just, because it was that bad you couldn't tell it was just so some sort of volunteers growing anywhere there. It looks like winter barley in there. God, it's bumpy this road. Apparently they've done a, quite a lot of resurfacing through Pickering. And uh, is it called Westgate? This side of the roundabout. It's all beautifully smooth time back. I don't know how long that'll last, about two weeks probably. If I want to dig it up for summer. I mean, it, it was obviously quite bumpy. I've done some here as well, from constant digging up, but I must admit I didn't think it was that bad compared to a lot of places, because some are absolutely really terrible these days, even on the main road, especially, I think it's a combination of things really, like works on the water pipes and gas pipes and uh, footing fibre broadbanding etc, you know, there's a lot of things I've been done other than relatively new things, that is. We've got along here without meeting anything massive.
quarter to eleven already. So I've got this, this Heifer car in, and at one time I was able to view my uh, cameras on the phone, but you can't. The router I have now, I just cannot get it to do it. You have to, uh, it's called port forwarding, and the one I had before, which was a Netgear one, I, I had it working quite quite happily, and uh, won't put his indicator on. This is too good for that, it's an Audi. Eight miles to Malton, but that's the centre of Malton. So if you could ma maintain 60 miles an hour, which we don't, that would take eight minutes. If you maintain 30 miles an hour, it would take 16 minutes, which is somewhere in between the two. He's riding out there either. If, I, if it was me and I was crawling along, I'd be either in the inside of the road or down that middle bit where it might be more grippy if that's what I was worried about. I really just don't know what's up with him. It's possible the bike's not, not running properly or something. I can't even maintain fourth gear behind him. This is a right pain, isn't it? I can't overtake him. And uh, he's doing us out 35 mile an hour, it's very really weird. It's like he's going around there without leaning over or something, I really don't know what to make of it. It looks like a a relatively large bike, it could be a, a learner 125 or something, I don't know. It seems like he's scared to lean it over.
What on earth are you parking there? Silly bastards. There's a lot of traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Oye, piensa en tu futuro. No pierdas más tiempo. ¿Por qué? Porque la vida es corta. Déjame en paz. Déjame solo. Yo vivo hoy. No miro para atrás. Pero piensa que es muy importante mirar para adelante. Para adelante. Para adelante. Para adelante.
adelante. Mirar para adelante, para adelante. adelante. 